Eiffel. London, 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 London. Eiffel. This is Kogan Cassius for I from London. We're at the XL here for the press conference between George Groves and Glencoff Johnson. With me, I've got trainers to George Groves, Adam Booth. Hello, Adam. Hello, Coogan. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to make an apology. So we start this interview off on the right foot. <coughs> make your apology, then. I'm going to make my apology. Um, I apologise for calling you a prick in our last interview because I watched that back and I did feel a little bit bad. So I'm apologising for that. Hey, you're not. I'm, apolo- I'm genuinely am apologising. The, word pr- the way you just said the word prick made me realise that you're not apologising at all. You said, this is what he said. He said, I'm just apologising for calling you a prick. That's what you just did. Again, I apologise for calling you a prick. Be a man. Stand by your convictions. No, no, I felt bad. I genuinely felt bad. Anyway, George Groves, Glencoff Johnson this week. Um, what sort of mood do you think George Groves is on the press conference today and Glenn Johnson? What was he taking from the press conference today? Um... It was how I hoped it would be. They're both real. Um, George is smart enough to know that he's got to give Glenn the respect that Glenn deserves. There's nothing that Glenn hasn't seen in the ring and outside the ring when it comes to the sport of boxing. So there's nothing that George can do that Glenn hasn't seen. So Glenn will always be able to adjust to what George does in the ring. And the challenge for George in this fight is that he's going to have to keep adjusting to control the fight. Um, didn't really say a lot in the press conference, Glenn Johnson. Um, what sort of motivation do you think Glenn Johnson has coming out of retirement? He's lost his last three fights to come and fight George Groves over here in England. What sort of motivation do you think he's got? I think he's happy to be fighting. I think he's happy that he's still in boxing. He, uh, he retired and then I read an interview with him recently where he said that he realised having announced his retirement and been sitting at home for three months, what life was like without boxing, which means that he's now so happy to be back in the gym and back training for a fight that we, you know, George has got a fighter here who's been going to the gym every day, happy to be going to work and, and you get your best out of yourself. So I expect Glenn to give George a much, much tougher test than, than probably a lot of people are saying because then he's lost his last three fights. But it was only a year and a half ago that he pushed Carl right to the wire in that fight in Atlantic City. And now everyone's claiming Carl to be, you know, best super middleweight in the world. He's still got to beat uh, Andre Ward. But, it was only a year and a half ago that Glenn pushed Carl like that. So he's not going to change that much. and He's not going to forget what he knows. And if he's training happy, he's going to be in good condition. Um, speaking of Carl Foch, obviously there's been a, a war of words that's erupted on Twitter between DeGal, Eddie Hearn, James DeGal and all George this morning now. So have you been monitoring the situation and keeping an eye on what's been going on? Oh, I, just, I, always, I just keep saying don't get involved on Twitter. Eddie Hearn said that it was um, medically unsafe for George or James to face Carl Froch right now. Okay, sounds like a promoter talking. So, I mean, how far is he away from someone like Carl Froch, in your opinion? Well, I know he's four days away from Glenn Johnson, and that's all that I'm thinking of. He used to be a consultant, a medical consultant for Kylie Minogue, didn't you? So, what do with you or this interview? I'm asking you a question. Is that today's thing, is it? No, no, no. He's got to have a thing. No, I'm asking you a question. I was quite interested about this, but I've never actually asked you about it. He was a, a medical consultant for Kylie Minogue. Was I? That's what, I, I'm, yeah, that's what I've heard. That's what you what? You heard? Heard. Where did you heard this? It must be right, because you would have otherwise, you would have point blank refused okay, it. So. Try not to mumble. Where did you hear this? I think I read it somewhere. I think you read it. So you didn't hear it, you read it? No, I read it somewhere. Oh, come on. Get is it true? And if it is true, what did you um, advise her about? You know, I said before about being a proper boxing journalist and not... I'm asking you a question that I want to know. Question, a piss-ant question. No, I'm asking you a question no, that I want to know. trying to think of the answer to. You know, move on. In life. Talking of uh, boxing... Move on in professions. Talking of boxing... earn money from this shit? Yeah, I do earn money, thank you very much. You can't earn much. Well, why, why can't I earn much? Why okay. can't I earn much? No, no, no. Maybe I made a bit of an assumption. Let me ask you a question. Do you earn much from doing this shit? I earn money from doing what I'm doing, yes. Do you earn more than £50,000 a year doing it? Is that what you earn, training world champion boxers? What are we playing? Question tennis? Do you earn enough money to live off doing this shit? I shouldn't be pointing to that. Doing this shit. Right, again, what's that got to do with this interview? 
What's Kylie Minogue got to do with this interview? Well, that's relevance to you being a trainer, obviously. That's relevance to me wanting to ask you a question about the shit that you do. Can I ask you another question? No, let me ask you a question. Your microphone usage is terrible. Give it to me. What's ATG Radio? <coughs> Around the Globe Radio. What is it? Well, it's a radio station in America. Okay, what do they, what, why, why all of a sudden are they hosting a worldwide award ceremony that features you as a fucking nominee? Right, okay, you've actually sent a tweet out to about 20,000 followers telling people to careful, vote for me. Careful. Right, no, careful. I'm just saying. Why did I send that tweet out? Oh, I don't know. What? No, why did I send that to you? Because you, because you like me. Okay. Because I like, because I like. That's why I sent it out. Because I like him. Maybe you saw some other people sending nice tweets out about me to try and win this award. Because it would mean a lot to me to win it. And maybe you thought, oh, do you know what? It's not because, not because you just handed me that twenty minutes ago for doing it, is it? <laughs> that was quick. All jokes aside, listen, thank you. All jokes do, aside, do, then, stop interviewing. No, seriously. That's the only way I have joking aside, stop interviewing. So you don't think I, I deserve to win this award? What's the award? What's, what's, what, Tell me what the re criteria Reporter is. of the year. Reporter of the year. Any category, including... No, boxing. Oh, only boxing. Yeah. Reporter of the year. Careful now. Do you not, uh, seriously, do you not think I deserve to win this? And you can take as much time as you want to think about it. <laughs> you know, we you know we get young boxer of the year at the Boxing Writers Club. Yeah, yeah maybe if if that was the sort of relative category, yeah, young boxing journalist of the year, novice wannabe, everyone's friend. Sad. There's a compliment in there somewhere. Somewhere really? deep down. Hang on. Wannabe sad. No, seriously, I was trying to conceal the criticism. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a hidden compliment. So would you advise people not to vote for me? No. no. Do you know what? I say vote for Coogan Cassius for the ATG Awards. Yeah? Yeah. Otherwise I've got to give you that 50 quid back. Okay, okay, listen, I'll gum. take that. I'll take that. that. I'll take that. He's chewing gum while he's in the... Don't wear a hat indoors. Doors open. Technically we're outside. Technically, okay, we're outside. Um, just one more thing, seriously. Is it a proper question? It's a proper question. Um, I'm stretching for it, go on. Uh, you're training Andy Lee now as well. As well as Patrick Aiden. As well as Aiden as well. Why did you take that decision to train Andy Lee? Um, thought that I wanted a challenge as a coach. Um, had a long chat with Andy, did a couple of sessions. I look at what he can do as a fighter, what he can't do as a fighter. And as a coach, it's a challenge to see if I can help the man be successful. And he's, and he's, he's a real gent as well, a proper professional student. And, and, it's a, and it's a joy to be in the gym with him every day. So I go to the gym every day and I, I'm enjoying what I do. Just like you come here and you absolutely love your job and you love the abuse that you get from me, I love going to the gym and training fighters that I can get on with. I'm not going to disagree with that. I would disagree with that. You love the abuse that I give you. Well, no, I just I take it a bit, you know, tongue in cheek. But yeah, no, I don't mind it. I authenticate you, don't I? You give me some sort of credibility. <laughs> the the abuse. Oh, I can't believe he fucking bullies you that much. Well done, Coogie. Give it back to him. Call him a prick again. Go on. Call I don't him. need to call you a prick again. We've yeah. gone over that, and I apologise for that. And I actually well, genuinely mean that tweet. And not give you that fifty quid back. That means that talk be gone forever. Listen. How many votes have you got? Uh. 1,243, that was this morning. I don't check it often, but that was this morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Listen, I'm about 70 head of Ellie Sekback in America, who's... Um, oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're above Ellie. Mm. Yeah, seriously? A man or a woman? That is a man. Okay. You're above him. Quite successful in America. Man. Listen, I'd like to be where he is right now. Where is he? 125 million YouTube views. But how many votes has he got? 70 less than Coogan Cassius. See? It's all relative. How much money does he earn? Probably more than me. Really? Right. We're working on it anyway. How? How? You still driving a new, a new Range Rover? It's not a new Range Rover, but yeah. What was that, what, six months old? Six months old, class is new, mate. Don't act conceited. Six months old is new. <laughs> Adam Booth, thank, thank you very much for talking to I from London. And you are very well coordinated today. And it looks like we've got similar trainers on, if you just pan down. No? A little bit. No, yours are leather, and I'm, I'm assuming low cut. I was on about the black and white. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Thank you very much. Touch.
Right, this is Coogan Cassius, Fry from London again. I've actually dragged Adam Booth back, who was actually on his way out, because um, there was some stuff that I wanted to talk to him about that I forgot to mention. I forget stuff. I forget London. stuff. Um, David Hay, third in Armour Celebrity, get me out of here. Very, very credible, went far. Thought he was going to win it. I think a lot of people thought he was going to win it. Um, what were your thoughts? Because I haven't spoke to you since he's been in there, so... We don't talk, mate. We all talk sometimes. Making out that we're mates. <laughs> you just happen to keep appearing at these press conferences I go to. Fair enough. But, um, I'm contractually obliged to go to, by the way. I don't come here Fair enough. Volition. Well, that's all right. That makes me a better person. So, David Hay, was you for this or against this, him going in the jungle? I was for it. Seriously, 100% for no, it. No one can see him swaying and trembling with nerves in front of me <clears throat> I was for it I said do it Dave when he asked me my opinion that was it to raise his profile no I just said do it Dave because he wanted to do it how did you think he'd done in there was you, was you watching every episode I think he'd done alright yeah, yeah. I think, think he'd done good do you think he'd come across alright to the British public I think he'd done alright yeah what do you think I think he'd come across very well in fact what do you think a lot of people 5 million people don't care what I think Is it really is that why you're behind the camera no, I'm behind the camera because I'm on my own. People that you talk to. What's your specialist field? Of what? What do you mean? What's your specialist field when you're doing your type of media work? I don't quite get the question. What's your specialist? Su what do you actually know about? Because you know fuck all about boxing. So do you know, is there something I'm missing? I don't look at your stuff. What am I missing? Um, I don't. I think I know everything about boxing. I know a little bit, enough to do what I'm doing. Okay, you don't know it. No, well, it's quite humble of you. No, you don't know everything about boxing. But what do you know something about? I know that I'm ahead of Dan Raphael in this voting thing. Hey! <laughs> Put him! Have that! Yeah, and a few other people as well. There's about nine in the category, but Dan there Raphael. I'm first You're at the moment. You're really keeping tabs on this, aren't you? I have to keep tabs on it because it's like everyone's always tweeting me like vote Coogan, vote Coogan, hashtag vote Coogan like I was doing for David. Hashtag vote Coogan. <laughs> what do you hashtag win? Hashtag win a plaque. I'm happy. If I get a plaque, it's got my name on it and it just says reporter of the year, I'm happy. Where'd you get the award? I don't know. They send it in the post, don't they? If you're not in America, they just stick it in a brown envelope with a well, bit I don't, of I'll take that, I'll take that. Listen, I'm going against some American bigwigs, allegedly. So, <coughs> you know, big, yeah. and I'm the only British nominee for that category. So to win that, you know. Will you feel validated as a man and as a professional journalist if you win this award? No, what I'll think is that there's certain people in America that may have seen my name and think, oh, who is this Coogan Cassius that's leading every day in this poll? Ah, uh, okay, I see. So it's like a it's like a publicity stunt for you. It's not a publicity stunt, no. Publicity, you want it for publicity. You just said you want more people in America, specifically America, to think, oh, who's cool? No, I said you? that's what will happen. I said, what did you want to get out of it? Oh, it's just, it's a nice accolade, isn't it? What, that people in America think, oh, who is this hashtag Coogan Cassius? I think it's a lot of... Let me, let, let, let me clear that up for you. Anyone watching America, Coogan Cassius is a twat. This is Coogan Cassius for I from London with Adam Booth. Thank you very much.